Oh, that's the elephant. Straight back. Not too far. That's the boil. That was him. Got him, Walker. Hooked up. <laughs> I don't want no attention. Tuna is the most highly coveted fish flesh on the planet, and we're lucky enough to be able to fish for them in our backyard. It's not just the Keys, it's anywhere. Book your trip, it's the most rewarding experience you're ever gonna have. Simrad's Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, with Captain Scott Walker and Captain Steve Roger. Both of us fish for tunas. Uh, we were both charter boat captains for a very long time. Um, you know, what, what was your go-to plan when it was time to catch black fins in October, November, in the fall? Well, the same commonality we have in Key West, we need that bait. We, we can catch them on feathers, but I don't want to. I want to catch some big ones. So it's all about getting up early and throwing that cast net. Give me a direction. 12 o'clock right now. 12 o'clock. Bottom's moving. Well, we do it different, but let's start with that. My clients are waiting for my boat at the dock. You take your clients with you, catch bait on the way. Me and my guys, we get up at, at, at two hours extra before the boat, ice it down, then disappear for an hour and a half with our skiffs, catch the bait, bring it, unload it, and then we're off to the races. Right. And depending on how much bait we have, depends on where we're gonna go. Sounds like once you start that, you can't get rid of that. Right. So that's why we never started that. <laughs> well, I, that that may be, yeah. but it, it's just, it's not uh, an option for a 42 footer, 50 footer to be running into the back. No, no, you had to have a different boat. You had to have yeah. a bait boat. So right. that, I get that, I get that. We, we only can catch them with the big boats in the spring. And so that leaves nine months of the year. We've got to have a bait boat. get up and go catch the bait ourselves, unload it, and then uh, get our uh, act together and take those 500 to 1,000 baits out to, for, for our area, the Marathon West Hump. There is also the 409 Hump off of Almrata and the Almrata Hump. But those seem to be the only three locations in the Middle Keys where you can target a blackfin tuna. For us in the Keys, I mean, it starts out the same way, right? We catch a load of bait, but I take my people with me because um, I'll make them work just as hard as I'm going to work. Uh, and, and, and people like to be a part of that whole aspect. It's almost like, you know, sometimes, um, you know, everybody wants to have a little hand in the, in the operation. So um, we will get the bait. We will head out and sit on the edge of the reef. And we anchor up in 160 to 120. And it's not necessarily because I'm gonna catch tunas there, but it's because I'm gonna catch everything there. I'm gonna catch my kingfish. I'm gonna catch my tuna fish. I'm gonna catch my sailfish. I'm gonna catch my mutton snapper. Um, so our fishery down there is, I don't know if it's evolved from where we've thrown the bait, because we all throw the bait at the same spot, like all the time. Um, and, and that caused those fish to hang out there. And it maybe could be hold true to your hump. You know what I mean? Those fish are there, obviously because there's an upwelling. Yeah. But another way we love to fish for the black fins in Key West is, um, you know, we like to get out there with the shrimp boats. Um, it, it, it's an amazing fishery. Um, you have this, this massive amount of bycatch that's involved in the shrimp fishery. And those guys are willing to give that bait to us and let us use it to fish with and we'll pull up behind them and we'll trade them maybe some sodas or a six pack of beer or whatever the case may be. We'll get the bycatch. Uh, we call it trash. That's just what I grew up calling it, uh, shrimp boat trash. And uh, there's a lot of guys who will bring that stuff inshore and they have established an unbelievable tarpon fishery in Key West Harbor because of that trash. Um, but we'll take that trash and we'll trickle it out behind the boats because there are so many tuna fish and bonitas following those shrimp boats. Um, and you can go out there and catch pretty much until you're tired. Blackfin tunas uh, and, and bonitas. Get him, bro. Completing the deal. Ready to? <sighs> <laughs> I job, no, we're paying you no attention. Y'all were busy back there. Oh, that's that's a nice. Beautiful blackfin tuna. Oh, look at that fly right there. Gorgeous. Man, nice that's job. Awesome. Nice job. What a fish, man. <laughs> He's no slouch either, buddy. I can hear you huffing and puffing. I believe you. On a ten-way rod, nonetheless, Tony. Yeah, man. Skill level's high.
Simrad's Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Simrad. Go with confidence. Hawks K Resort, the only key you'll need. Shimano. Bubble Blade, the ultimate sportsman's knife. Yeti, built for the wild. And by Power Pro, Sea Deck, and Costa. So if you're going to Marathon, you're going to want some live bait. Catch uh, it. We'll catch it ourselves or if we, or or you we can find buy somebody it. to buy it from. And yeah. if, if you can't get that, you know what, you can pull little feathers and you catch all the tunas you want with little feathers. Very successful as well. If you come to the Keys, we're going to start with live bait. If we're not live bait fishing, we're going to be behind the shrimp boats and all we're going to do is take some shrimp boat trash with us. Whether we take it frozen that we got it from the day before or a month before or we trade when we get out there, little two bartering. sodas little or whatever. Um, in the Northern Gulf, very similar. We do a little bartering, we get uh, the trash from the guys, but also we take a lot of live pogies. If we can get some mullet, we take the mullet with us. It um, seems like the, the bigger the baits, the better, because even a 30 pound black fin can eat a 10 inch live mullet. Right. Unbelievable. Right. And the northern golf, the way they fish behind their shrimp boats is a lot different. You know, they what they're doing is they're dealing with a moving shrimp boat. Right. right? So in the Keys, my whole life, we fished behind an anchor shrimp boat. They don't usually... It's nice and quiet. Yeah. They don't usually uh, uh, shrimp during the day because of what I was told is all the all the bycatch is so much greater, all the fish they catch. There's so much fish that it's just, it's, it's not, it doesn't work out for them. So they just try to shrimp at night when the shrimp are up and out of the mud and they catch a lot more shrimp. Um, in the Northern Gulf, the situation is this. If you can envision, you have 300 bonitas, you have a hundred black fins and you have two big allisons you know big big yellowfin tuna the chances of the yellowfin getting to the bait is are, is not good you know it, he's he's big and he's slower than those other fish those fish are faster and quicker and they're going to beat him to the bait so what they like to do in, in the northern gulf is throw a much larger bait they're going to throw something that Take has a little 50 harder. 50 percent of the players out of play yep exactly. hopefully 80 percent oh that's yellowfin straight back not too far that's the boil that was him. I'm good. You threw it right on his head. Got him, Walker. Hooked up. That toss was right in that boil. Another one back there, Stevie? Yeah, there's one working around. All right. I got this one pulling the bow a little bit. <laughs> I'm fighting him right on the splice knot. A little tug of war. Yeah, I got it, Gil. Woo! Got me in the well. All righty. Got a little meat. A little bit of meat. <laughs> Look at it in the machine. Gonna need a little. A little ice for that one. The other thing they like to do is keep a chumming situation going with the dead trash coming off the boat. You're, you're, you know, you're resembling a shrimp boat. You're just pushing stuff over. So the sharks and the bonitas, they are the first swarmers. Right. And you got to get past the first swarmers to get to the quality catch. And it's not as easy as you would think. You have to have 50, 60, 70 pounds of chum and shrimp trash, you're not going out there with a five gallon bucket of bait no. and being successful. And nothing is getting more than five feet down without getting eating. I mean, no, it's, nothing it's goes visually away. just awesome. Yeah. And, and another- Because <laughs> the shrimp boats left you. Yeah. And now you're in the clean water. You're the, you're the shrimp boat. Yeah. The other thing that was, it was very uh, challenging in the, in the Northern Gulf, you had to fish with a 50, okay. attack 50. Um, it's a light, awesome reel. But at the same time, it, 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 it's got a lot of drag pressure on it. But the reason you have to fish with that reel is because you don't know when the 200 pounder is gonna bite. So one minute you're catching these 10 pound bonitas, these uh, 20 pound black fins, and it, it might look like we were big gaming them, you know, we're like, you know, and just wrestling them and slinging them everywhere. But that's because the rod is so heavy. Um, but you have to have that rod because you, it, it, when you throw the bait in the water, I, I don't know how you explain to people, they say, oh, so you threw it into the yellowfin or you threw it into the, no, no. You put it in the water and you have no idea what you're gonna catch. I've even seen those fish where the bait's above the water and they're eating it, you know? Yeah. So it's, it's, a, it's a very violent situation. Uh, you, the heavier tackle lets you get the smaller fish done quick so you can get back in the game. Because right. if I'm fighting a 10 pound bonita 
you're you're up next if the 200 pounder shows up. Right. If you do that with 20 pound tackle like we do in the Keys, yeah. you're out of the game for too long. And it's very important to check for Chase. Listen, I'm, you know, you we had we a haven't even mentioned the leaders. Right, we stuff. had a mishap uh, on a big fish. The first and, one, and I guarantee it, and it could have been me. You know, I, I could have caught a fish, uh, a bonita, on that other rod, and I could have took the hook and put it on the and set the rod, set it to the side. But I'm a big believer in every fish. If you got a possibility of a trophy coming around, you need to go ahead and cut it and retie. You want a fresh piece of leader there because when that gets in that fish's mouth, and he's 200 pounds, and you're putting that kind of heat on him, you don't want the line to fail, the leader to fail. Um, but it, at any rate, it, it's a great way to see it's just all a, three fish. Yeah. You know, your blackfin, your bonita, and your yellowfin. It's a great way behind a shrimp boat to see that happen. I have a few new tips on the Simrad Echo Sounder that I think you're gonna love. There are three new features that I find really exciting incorporated into new Evo 3 and Echo Sounder settings. Minute marker, color marker, and color erase. I do have a demo here with me in the Western Marine store. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna use color marker and color erase. As you can see here, we have a typical Echo mark under our boat. Once you're set up on your Echo page, to find any new options, you're gonna have to go into the menu and we're gonna go to more options. And we're gonna zoom to here, and here they are. Color marker, color erase, and minute marker. To, to engage minute marker, it's just click on yes. And then right here on our screen, you see the white and the black banding. That's real time. So if we mark a bait ball right here, and we get a bite, you come right back, and it'll tell you the length of time it took from time you went over that bait ball to time you got bit. And then when you make your next pass, you can actually be watching your baits right before the fish attacks. Pretty cool. All right, now, here's, here's the biggest complaint you have. I'm fishing and there's so much information on my screen, I don't want to take my gain and make it all go away because then all the information that the gain's providing is completely gone. I just want to get rid of some of the stuff. So we're going to turn on color erase. And then, since I want some of these little blue targets out here, we're going to go up, to, up into these upper colors and click them on. As we click them on, they're being erased, but my gain's still set, so now I'm only seeing the big fish that I'm after. You check the colors that you don't want to see, but it's as simple as one, two, three, check, and boom, that's set up for you on your screen. Besides that, we also have color marker. Color marker is going to take out all the colors from the bottom that you don't want to see. So if we want to start getting rid of some of these redder colors, look at that. Now we have just individual fish marks. It's, again, it's just a custom screen setting for you and your boat and what, what you like to see and what you don't like to see. But between color marker and color erase, you can take in a few seconds, set up your bottom machine just the way you want it to attack the fish that you want to fish for. Now you have it. With color marker, color erase, and minute marker, you just became a better fisherman and you didn't even know it. The beauty of our hump is it is 25 miles out. It's in 1,100 feet of water and it, it rises to 490 feet on the top. Uh, it's, it's 500 yards wide across. Everyone in Central Keys, Marathon, Almorada knows the spot because the Gulf Stream's smashing into that and it's bringing the cold water up, mixing with the warm, a little plankton bloom starts and the beginning of life. And yeah, you don't have to have a number to those humps. No, you do you not. You can see them. You can you, see them from a, eight miles out. There's a rip. I mean, there's a huge rip. You know, we, we've been here many times and, and the fish were a lot larger in one of the more recent times that we fished together on that hump. What, what else as far as tunas? I mean, do you hear much about uh, any yellowfins ever getting caught this way? I've been here 35 years and I've never seen a yellow fin unless I was fishing for black fins and a 15 pounder mixed in the school. Okay, now there are some guys who've caught them though uh, sail fishing uh, in the kites in the, in the, in the Again, spring time. But, but that's not here, that's a Key Largo to Miami. Okay. Which is nuts. Okay. But they also get a blue and a white marlin mixed in. Right. Um, now they're, for they're some reason they, they loop out and around us and then come back in 
right before they um, start getting more towards the Gulf Stream. Because and where we fish for them in the Bahamas ain't that far away. I know. Not that far away. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense. Kind nice yellowfin. Blackfin. <laughs> it's a yeller. Oh, it is a yellowfin. Oh, yeah. I got it. Chunk okay. them up, catch one. Yellowfin tuna, Scotty. Just winding it in, checking the bait. I, I think the fish is around. I think we just, we're missing him somehow. Whether it's, you know, we need to be. What technique do we got to figure right. out? Right, that's what it is, you know what I mean? Whether it's but chunking. Think sword fishing, day timing, sword fishing, night timing. He'd be getting more of a bycatch of them. But right. here in the Middle Keys, we have no bycatch of any technique. Right, right. And, and maybe it's because of the time of year. Maybe they're out there when everybody's not dolphin fishing and everybody's in shore grouper fishing, or you know what I mean? That could be it. The you know, timing when, could be off. If it's winter time, we're gonna, we're gonna save fuel and stay right on the reef and make yeah. our money. Hey, you wanna see more of Into the Blue? Well, you can. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or even come on over to our YouTube channel. See you there. Sim Rad's Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, has been brought to you in part by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. West Marine, for your life on the water. Scales, every degree of water. Mercury Marine, go boldly. And by Ameritrail and Spear One Charters. You see it every year. And it's, it's funny because they're not the big ones, but they're so cooperative. You know, they'll bite anything. If you got a, a bass lure you throw it in there, they're gonna hit it. If you got a, a worm, they're gonna hit it. If you got, <laughs> when, when you have fish in a frenzy like that, busting on top, feeding, I think their eyes are shut and their mouths are open. <laughs> it is an unbelievable eating fish. You know, it, it's a puller, mm -hmm. it pulls hard, it's a visual bite, they, they air out in the keys, that's how we know it's tunas. The, the black fins jump and clear, clear the air, whereas a bonita, very, very rarely, boil, actually, boil, they boil. just boil. They don't, they don't leave the surface of the water and, and air out. But as tuna fishing goes, that is the most hands-on personal experience you can get. You're not trolling and then having seven rods go down, picking up a rod and winding it. You are hand feeding them, then pretty much choosing the one you want to catch if you're lucky enough. I mean, we were having troubles one day with all bonitas just to catch the black fins. We, Bonita, 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 there'd be a black fin, you throw it in, but he's gone already. You had to kind of anticipate the timing, but it's so much fun. You just, you wind until you don't want to wind anymore. Apparently the conditions for the yellow tail are not happening, but they're definitely happening for the tuna. You know, the other thing that we love about those shrimp boats is I get a lot of fly fishermen that want to go out there and, you know, some of these guys never even seen the backing on their fly reel. You go out on the flats and you might fish all day for two or three shots at a permit. Um, you know, even with the tarpon on fly, it's not the easiest thing in the world, but if, you know, there's guys who've seen the back in a bunch, but my point is, you take somebody out behind a shrimp boat, they can bring a fly rod and they're gonna see the backing, they're gonna break two fly rods, they're gonna uh, break a reel. Then they're gonna have a blast doing it. Unbelievable, right. They're gonna actually, like I said, catch fish until you don't wanna catch them anymore. I have a lot of guys from the Northeast that come down that they don't even care about the blackfin. They care about the, the little, they call them little tunnies. The, you know, the, the, the albies, the albies, yeah. the mm -hmm. albies, which is our bonita. And um, they love just to catch them all day because I think they spend a lot of time up there in the Northeast running around chasing these little anchovy hatches or what have you with, with, uh, with the albies busting through them. So they're just tickled pink that they, we can roll out behind a shrimp boat and catch. And set up and then until they 300 get, fish a piece, you know yeah, what I mean? Or whatever you want to do. And we're just letting them go, but the guys just want to pull on them. <laughs> really? You got the bonito on that one? Yes! Five black fins and one bonita. Scotty got it. Yeah, I know. Scott. It's all black fin. Look, Tony needs to get that thing off oh. his rod. Oh, yeah! <laughs> There's a bunch of them here now, boys. Don't know the little scoopity doopity. Key lime, everybody. Oh, key lime, you just get that face in the water. Everybody, oh, gets, everybody gets moving. They're <laughs> reckless. 
All about time. There it is. Oh, oh that's yeah. him, Tony. Was it him? That's him. There was three there, and I think he's the winner. You ready awesome. to pop one? Yeah, I'm going to do the three plug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me get out there a little They're bit. They're all so good to eat. Even yep. the skipjack tuna, it gets a bad rap because it's not the blackfin we're Great after. Great sashimi. And it's, Great fish. It, but all, all the canned tuna you eat is skipjack. It's very little of it's actually yeah. yellowfin. I think a skipjack is one of the prettiest things, uh, you know, from to see. I mean, Hard, I, I'm hardest fighting of the. The bonita and skipjack side by side, the skipjack's got them every Well, if a, if a bonita grew to the size <laughs> of any of those other ones, I wouldn't want to catch him. Right. He would hurt you. Um, and it's a good eating sashimi fish. You know, the blackfin tuna um, is a great eating fish. You know, I, we've, we've been, uh, I had a customer that canned them. I told you about canning them. I am now You're officially a, a canner. canner. Yeah, and the, it, it, that <laughs> tuna is unbelievable fresh. It's good sashimi. It's good uh, sushi-wise. It's good canned. Um, and then you got the yellowfin, which is uh, the greatest thing about the yellowfin is the size. Yeah. You can actually get a nice big steak and grill it, you know, inch and a half thick. That's the beautiful thing. And keep it rare in the middle. Um, and, and that's why you don't see as much blackfin in a lot of these restaurants. Yeah, you can't get that eight, signature steak that yeah, a person wants a to lot pay of dollars for. Yeah, a lot of chefs come out of culinary school and they don't know that two four ounce slices make eight. You know what I mean? They only say we have to have eight ounce portion because we so drizzle. no math in culinary college? I guess not. <laughs> and we drizzle this stuff across and I lay my asparagus just like this and he don't know how to do it with two. Or it's, it's, you know, so yep. you don't see blackfin because you can't, you don't get that big it's eight ounce It's not because it's not great to eat. It's just it's the smaller portion. It's a smaller loin, you know, yeah. so. If you have a charter boat service anywhere in your area, just a couple quick phone calls. Are there tuna around what time of year? Book your trip and you're gonna find multiple different ways to catch them, but it's the most rewarding experience you're ever gonna have.